Well, joining me now to discuss Sonny Javid's appointment and the events that led up to it are The Guardian columnist Owen Jones and Mark Wallace, the executive editor of Conservative Home. Owen, Mark, good to see you both. Many thanks indeed for joining us. Owen, if I could firstly start with you on Amber Rudd, was it right for her to go? Well, one human shield has been replaced by another. I do find it morally repulsive that she resigned on a technicality basis, uh, basically, rather than the actual injustice itself. Let's just be clear, this is one of the greatest scandals in this country in recent times. People who are as British as you or I, people who have lived here as long as you or I combined, effectively, have ourselves lived, who have been deprived of health care, who, after having brain surgery, have been thrown out on the streets and denied beds who have been made homeless repeatedly and have been deported from this country. The idea that nobody was going to resign over that was clearly contemptuous. But let's be very, very clear about this. It was Theresa May as Home Secretary and then as Prime Minister who was responsible for the so-called hostile environment that led to this calamitous situation which has ruined so many lives in this country. And, a, and, and what we saw for many years, and it was the most of the, uh, the political elite, the Labour leadership excluded currently, as well as much of the left, lonely voices though we were, and the British media, who scapegoated immigrants for the lack of housing, the lack of secure jobs, falling wages and cuts to public services, which were the responsibility of the powerful, and it ended up in a situation where black Britons, people as British as you or I, have been kicked out of the country, denied health care and have been made homeless. Theresa May is responsible. She should resign. But the hostile environment has to stop. Otherwise, this injustice will happen over and over and over again and we'll be debating human misery for many years to come. Mark, let's pick up on that point um, uh, from Owen that uh, all roads do lead to the Prime Minister because she has earlier on admitted, confirmed that there were deportation targets while she was Home Secretary. Indeed, and as far as I've seen today, the Labour Party also doesn't seem to be objecting to the idea that there ought to be deportation targets to deal with illegal immigration. What Owen just said, part of it is completely right. The Windrush scandal is an obscene scandal. It's appalling that anybody with a uh, legitimate right to be here was treated in this way. And it is, it is horrendous. It is a serious failing. And it is right their head should roll for it. Um, the second thing that Owen said, however, is completely wrong. I don't think you can just elide the idea of legitimate people who are legitimately in this country and illegal immigration. The fact is most people, I think, watching today would say that do we want people to be mistreated unfairly and wrongly as the Windrush migrants have been? Sorry, the, wind, the Windrush generation have been. Uh, of, course, of course they don't. Do they want a legal immigration challenge, which is a very different thing? Absolutely, and it should be possible for a government of any colour to, to, to fulfil both of those expectations. And Owen, what the Prime Minister did say earlier was that they were responding to the need to deal with illegal immigration. Well, I think we've got to the nub of it, actually. And, and this is about courage and it's about leadership. It's being about being able to say things which, at a given time, are not popular. It was not popular in 2014 to oppose the immigration bill. Only a handful of MPs opposed it. That included the likes of Jeremy Corbyn, John McDonnell uh, and David Lammy, for example, and Diane Abbott, who warned of what could happen as a consequence. And the government played to the basest uh, prejudices that existed, whipped up by the tabloid press in this country. But actually, the British people are so much more decent than people have given them credit for. Because when they see the consequences of where this leads, where British citizens, as British as you or I, are deprived of their homes, are deprived of medical treatment, and are deported from this country, they see a grave injustice that cannot be justified. And that is why now, instead of a race to the bottom, which is what we've had for so many years, over scapegoating immigrants, which has led to this disastrous situation, we need now to be able to say to people, look, this is about fairness, a sense of fairness which most people in this country have, and by scapegoating immigrants, we have led to a calamitous situation that has caused this amount of misery. And maybe, just maybe, when we're talking about the lack of affordable homes, we should hold the government to account for not building them. When we're talking about public services under strain, many of them propped up by immigrants, by the way, maybe we should talk about the cuts to them. If we're talking about falling wages, because we had the worst falling wages of any industrialised country other than Greece, Maybe we should hold uh, those who plunge this country into economic crisis and politicians responsible rather than migrants. Because if we end up in a situation where we scapegoat immigrants for all the injustices and all the problems that we face in this okay. country, we end up with this scandal. And that is a mirror everybody has to look at. And they might not like the reflection, but they need to look carefully because that's where we've ended up as a country. Mark? 
I'm sorry, Owen, but, but you've just done it yet again. What you've done is you've, you've instantly started using this very broad brush term, immigrants, scapegoating immigrants in, in your terms. While you, while you talk about abolishing the idea of any hostile environment policy, are you seriously saying, firstly, that there should be no distinction drawn between legitimate migrants and legitimate residents in this country and illegal immigrants? Are you seriously saying that we should not have a system that asks and checks whether people are legitimately in this country or not? No, I'm not, I'm not saying we should have a system to do with undocumented migrants. That's not what we're talking about with the hostile environment. We're talking That's about turning... The environment we're no, no, no. We're talking about turning teachers and nurses and private landlords into unpaid border guards for the British state. We're talking about talking the introduction... About asking people no, 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 let me just quickly... Let me, let me give you a concrete example. One time, please, gentlemen. What are the so we can all let, let me give you a concrete example now, and I want to test you on this, because I think it's a fundamental point. We're now talking about the introduction of voter ID. This is modelled on the Republican right in America, which has tried to restrict the franchise, restrict the electorate to more affluent white voters who are more likely to vote. It's modelled on the electoral no, 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 system in Northern no, no, Ireland no, no, and no, the recommendations let me, of the let Electoral finish, Commission. In let fact. me finish. Well, that I don't know voter, if you're going to give an example. Isn't, voter isn't voter true. ID, we know in both America and in this country, those least likely to have voter ID are people from black and minority ethnic communities. What will happen in practice as a consequence of this policy? Is, is voters from black and minority ethnic communities are disproportionately going to be turned away from polling stations to deal with an issue, voter fraud, which is minimal. I'm going to ask you now, Mark, because we may end up in a Sky News studio in a couple of years' time debating black and minority ethnic voters being turned away. Are you not scared of that eventuality, given four years ago, five years ago, me and you would have been in Sky News debating the immigration bill, and you would have accused me of scaremongering, and look where we've ended up. So that's a direct question. I want an answer to it. Well, firstly, was that your answer to my direct question a moment ago about exactly whether, why, why it is that you're proposing that we should have a system that does not ask about questions of legitimate migration or Ill illegitimate migration? It's no. peculiar you've come back at me you've, with no, that. No, no, no. You've I've asked, asked, I've asked, I've asked, asked, asked you that. You've asked me to wait. the question. Let, let me, me finish, to, please. You, 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 you asked me to wait while, while uh, you gave your speech a moment ago. Um, the second thing to say is uh, that, that actually, you know, I, personally, I've had some experience of dealing with the Home Office's mixture of incompetence and hostility when it comes to uh, the rights of legitimate migrants. There are very serious problems in that system, uh, and very serious problems evidently that need to be sorted out. It is, a very, it is a very serious issue. I don't think it's right to blur the distinctions between uh, legitimate migrants and legitimate residents of this country and illegal immigration. Um, the next thing to say is that when it comes to what, what you've just asserted about the idea of where voter ID and proper secure ballot in this country comes from, it simply isn't true. You ignore the fact that we already have this system in place in Northern Ireland. You ignore the fact that this is an official recommendation in order to improve the security of our ballot. And you also pursue this peculiar idea that as if voters of all different ethnic, ethnic backgrounds are not capable of demonstrating very simple tests on their identification to have a fair ballot. What's peculiar about this is there are really, really serious issues about people's lives that we could be talking about right now. And instead of just deal with the practicalities and real and, and, and I think reasonably in, in response yeah. to the point I just made, what you do is you jump off from one, one, one question of a, a nope. illegal migration, you jump on to uh, a question of blurring the two. When I ask you okay. about blurring the two, you jump onto the voter well, okay, ballot. Just, that's, just, that's not just, a reasonable oh, discussion. If I could ask you, I mean, do, do you concede that there are legitimate concerns about illegal immigration? The term hostile environment it was a phrase that was coined under a Labour government. In fact, the former Home Secretary, Alan Johnson, uh, used a phrase on more than one occasion. I, well, I reject uh, New Labour, the old Labour establishment's way of dealing with immigration, which was a race to the bottom on who could scapegoat immigrants the most for the crimes of the powerful. And just to return to those two points by Mark, Firstly, with voter ID, we know that the poorest in society are least likely to have ID. We know they are disproportionately likely to be from black and minority ethnic communities. And I would note a very, very striking irony here, that my opponent here is supposed to be an advocate for small state libertarianism, rolling back the state, would caricature me probably as a big state socialist, who advocates turning teachers and nurses and private landlords into unpaid border guards for the British state. We, yes, we do need to have a debate about undocumented migrants in this country without scapegoating or demonising them for problems caused by the powerful. That does not mean rolling forward the frontiers of the state in an authoritarian way which has led to people who are British 
as you and I are, being stripped of their medical care, being stripped of their house and being kicked out of the country, which is a far graver injustice than anything that hostile environment was set up supposedly to deal with. Okay, we are almost out of time. Uh, Mark, just a final thought from you. Well, I think, it's, I think it's peculiar, and to be honest with you, I think le less than honest and reasonable to go from, uh, to actually try and blur together uh, three different groups, as Owen's just done. Firstly, um, people who are illegally in this country. Secondly, people who are legally and legitimately uh, migrants to this country. And thirdly, black and minority ethnic Britons who have, who, who are, have never migrated in their lives. These are different things, and I think, unfortunately, I, I don't think Owen's reasonably engaging with that topic. Well, that's the point, though, isn't it? If you end up with a hostile environment for so-called illegal immigrants, the people People who will be caught so in the net include, so you, you're, include, you're include, suggesting there shouldn't no, 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 be tests because, to require uh, no, employers no, 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 no. to prove that no, no, they are the point employing just, legitimate workers, Mark, for example. Mark, the point I just made is... employers should not the, have to pass that the, test, in your The view. reason I just said so-called illegal immigrants is because people who you and I agree with are not undocumented migrants, who are as British you and I are, have been caught up in the net. And that's the point I'm making. Okay. You end up with a hostile environment for, so, for, for undocumented migrants in the way we've had, you will end up kicking out Britons from their own homes, should, stripping them of medical care and kicking kicking them out of the country. And gentlemen, that's and gentlemen, and gentlemen, I'm afraid we're out of time. Gentlemen, workers. I am afraid we're out of time. Owen Jones, Mark Wallace, very interesting talking to you. A debate that will continue for some time, I'm sure. Thank you.